So let's take a further look down here. I mentioned before how you could see how wide the track is. These actually, these wheels are actually inflated. They're not solid rubber. And thankfully we have many of those as spares. That's a real benefit. And you'll notice how the track comes back here. Now, if I haven't mentioned it before, this is amphibious. This will do approximately 40 kilometers an hour on the roads and it will swim at approximately seven kilometers an hour, which is pretty cool. If you're familiar with boats, there's actually a bilge pump, a boat bilge pump in here and in the back, should they take on any water. But this back here has gotta be the most interesting part of this vehicle. It makes it so damn unique. We have an, it's an articulation steering. So there's a steering wheel in the front and it's a normal four speed with a reverse. It's like driving a car except when you turn the wheel, there's no steering wheels. There's no tiller bars like in a tank where you brake one side or accelerate the other. This is called an articulate type of steering. And when I turn the wheel, the, the turn is in here. So the whole vehicle jogs to the right on an angle. It's really strange to drive. I just drove it today, probably for the first time uh, uh, since, we've, since we've got it. I've taken it around our tank arena but it's a very unique piece. Now, if you move back here, it looks like a trailer, but it's not really a trailer. It's an extension of the same vehicle. This articulation allows it to go up and over very high and sharp kind of corners. It'll, and the fact that it's amphibious, you can go across rivers. So nothing really stops this thing. There's no armor on it, but it's meant to transfer people around. Now back here, again, the articulation, it's not just for the steering. It also transfers power to the, a, a drive wheel uh, here. A front, there's a, a sprocket here. So in fact, there's one, two on the right and two more on the left. So this is a four track drive. Very interesting. So that this rear, what looks like a trailer is actually part of the propulsion. It actually pulls it along. And in water, these fins here move the water al along and all four of them are working to propel the vehicle through water. Very unique. This is linked up. If we could come back, uh, back up to here, this is meant for cold weather. Well, a really interesting part is this rear compartment is heated. There's heaters that are in the floor and on the sides. And this back unit here, this will hold up to 10 troops. So think about it. You, can, you have a, a driver and a commander here. In the back, you can have eight to 10, they say 10 people in the back. You can have your Klansman, your British communication radio system right here. And it's all set up for that because it is built for the British government. But you have the, the heating system comes from the radiator of the engine. So this little four cylinder engine not only powers all this, but the coolant that cools the engine travels back and it goes through a grid on the back and it actually keeps the people in the back warm. Very unique system. So here's the back of the unit and you'll notice it's got your standard British trailer hitch, your st standard British access point for charging. Uh, it flaps back so the track tensioning is right here and here. It's a little same principle as a basic tank. It just pulls the rear idlers back and tightens or loosens off the sprockets. So we won't open it up because it's just full of spare parts. So as I said, we just got it. But imagine this thing rolling into Port Stanley. The British have just conquered the Argentinians and they're going into the capital of the Falklands, Port Stanley. And there's all kinds of these and the Marines, the Royal Marines are laying on both sides. And this is, this goes up maybe six feet with all their gear up there. So this little, this little vehicle, I'll tell you, was a, a godsend for the, the British in the Muskeg in the swamp area they had to cross in the miserable weather. They all loved this vehicle. This was also the command unit. Before Mount Tumbledown, there was a battle at Mount Tumbledown. It was one of the last battles in the Falklands. They had several of these, um, maybe three or four, back together, and that was the command centers. All the commanders, all the regiments of the units were centralized there. They all had extensive radios on them. So these were not only traveled and say, but these were the command centers. There were no, there's no ability to have big vehicles in. It's amazing.